Mark. Hi everybody. Um, so in today's lesson, I'm trying to try things a little bit differently um, and see if you like being able to see me as well as hear me. Um, I like to make my hands around a lot, so we'll see how you got on with that. Let me know um, in the lesson and in some student voice that we're going to do um, whether this is distracting or if you find it useful for me, okay? Um, so today we are going to be looking at modulation. Um, and modulation is, um, there are two types, AM and FM, or amplitude modulation and frequency modulation, and we're going to understand what they are. Um, so we're going to start off by stating the process that is involved in AM and FM, then we're going to give equations uh, for how they work, and then we're going to finish up with explaining how FM sidebands can be adjusted in a little bit. Um, so, starting off with what is modulation? So, if you were to look at uh, my voice right now on your computer screen, um, if you uh, run it through something like Audacity, or even when I'm editing this video, uh, the sound that I produce um, is this wave. You can see it here on the screen. Um, it's uh, a variation in voltage in a microphone against time. Now, that's pretty cool. Um, however, it's relatively low frequency, as we've discovered uh, when we did the ultrasound stuff. Uh, humans hear between 20 hertz and 20,000 kilohertz. Human voice uh, is between uh, about probably 100 hertz, maybe a bit lower, um, going up to about 15,000 hertz. Um, so this is, in terms of the electromagnetic spectrum, really, really low frequency. Um, and there's a lot of natural EM radiation at the 20, to 20, 20, sorry, 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz range. So you might think, well, let's just broadcast sound. If I want to get... Um, a uh, radio communication with someone else, let's just broadcast it in the audible range. Well, two problems with that. Firstly, um, obviously I'm only going to be able to broadcast one signal at a time, so anywhere in the world you only have one person uh, signaling. Second problem um, is that there's so much natural radiation that you're going to get lots of interference. So interference is when you're going to get signals that aren't your signal crashing over the top of the signal that you want. It's going to be rubbish, we're, we're not going to be able to do anything useful with it. Um, and so we can't transmit directly at the voice frequencies. We're going to need to change our frequencies. So this is where modulation comes in. Um, the idea of modulation is we basically need to take a carrier wave and we need to mix it with a message wave or a signal wave. Uh, you might see those two terms used interchangeably. So the carrier wave is like the EM radiation that we're actually going to use. This thing's going to transmit it at. So when you tune a radio, if you remember tuning your, your parents' cars, um, you set that to a certain number of megahertz or kilohertz, that's the carrier wave frequency. We need some way of combining it with the message wave frequency, and that's where modulation comes in. Um, so, this is the simplest form of modulation that you can see here. This is amplitude mod modulation. And in amplitude modulation, you can see that the maximum amplitude of the modulated wave is equal to the amplitude of the carrier wave plus the amplitude of the signal wave. So watch that as it goes past. You can see that just coming past the screen now we've got a peak in our signal. Uh, what you can see is that the, we get a maximum in our amplitude wave at the same time as a maximum in our signal wave. Um, when we get a minimum in our signal wave, we're getting a minimum in the amplitude of our, of our, sorry, of our transmitted wave. Um, so what you can do is to demodulate it, turn it back into sound, you basically just need to take what was the maximum amplitude of my carrier wave at any moment in time, um, and say, well, that will become the voltage at any point. Yeah, so if you look at the signal wave, what we've got again is a changing voltage, and I can say, well, forget about changing the voltage. I'll just say that at an instant in time, whatever the maximum amplitude of my AM wave is, that's going to be the voltage at that instant in time. Now, that works um, through some pretty complicated circuits that you're not required to know um, for A level. Um, but one of the key things there is that because the AM wave has a much higher frequency um, than the signal wave, um, we can just take those peaks of the amplitude wave, and when we've got peak going up, 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 um, we just be, that just becomes the outline um, of our AM wave. Um, now this is an extension task, you do not need to know this, however, um, I am going to go through a little bit of maths that might make this a little bit simpler for you. Okay, so we're going to um, talk about this in a little bit of a mathematical way. So what I want to think about are two separate things that we can have. Uh, we're going to have signal 
uh, we'll, we'll just call it S. We'll just call it S for our signal. Uh, signal um, will be equal to, and this is a standard equation that you've always got, um, it will be our act with the signal times cos omega t. And you should recognise that um, from stuff that we said before, this is just a general equation um, for a wave. So this is my signal wave. Um, this will be my carrier. So my carrier will have its own amplitude, and that will be carrier cos omega carrier t. So I'm going to change these omegas to be omega signal and omega carrier t. Now, the key thing about these is that the frequency of the uh, omega of the signal is going to be much, much smaller than the frequency or the angular frequency of the carrier wave, because the carrier is a much higher frequency signal. That's part of the reason why this is going to work. Okay. So what I can say is that to modulate it, it becomes... Um, I just want to change the uh, modulation of the uh, carrier wave. So the modulated wave will be this. It will be some uh, be the start of the carrier wave, so the out of the carrier wave at its basic level, plus the signal. Okay, I'm going to add the signal to this sort of multiplier at the start, and then I'll have that times cos of omega of the carrier times time. So what that's doing is this term here is defining the amplitude of my wave. So if I have a bigger signal value at any moment in time, this multiplier becomes bigger, so I'm going to get a bigger modulated signal. Now what you'll also notice is that means that I don't end up um, getting a zero amplitude. Even if I have zero uh, signal, my modulated carrier, sorry, my modulated signal is still going to have some amplitude to it. And that's quite important because um, otherwise it would be quite difficult um, to get signals to transmit over long distances and stuff like that. Okay, uh, if I expand this out, um, I could say that my uh, modulated signal will be the carrier signal plus uh, S0 cos omega S of t multiplied by cos omega t. Then you can see that I've, I've sort of hidden this changing signal inside this signal. Okay. So that's the basics of AM uh, modulation, or amplitude modulation. Let's move on to frequency modulation. All right, so let's think about uh, frequency modulation now. Um, so in frequency modulation, if you look at the bottom one, at the uh, blue line here, what you'll see is that the higher the signal voltage, the higher the frequency. So again, the top line is going to be showing me my voltage in time of my signal. Um, the blue line is now showing me what my final uh, modulated signal is going to look like. So can you see that where I've got a peak, that corresponds to very close together uh, waves. Where I've got a trough, they come out. So the frequency is changing. Yeah? If I have a high uh, input signal, uh, I end up with a very high frequency. If I have a low input signal, I end up with a very uh, low frequency modulated uh, frequency. Um, so yeah, high, high signal, high frequency, low signal, low frequency, pretty simple. Now this means, however, that we're going to now need a spectrum of frequencies. Amplitude modulation, we were quite happy sitting there with just our carrier wave frequency. That was all that was changing in time. Now, however, we're going to end up with a spectrum of frequencies. So let's think about that. This is a classic diagram that you probably see quite a lot in your book and maybe uh, in the exam. Um, so this is a typical case. Um, let's say I have modulation of 25 kilohertz per volt. Um, that would be pretty standard. So what that means is for every volt of input signal, I'm going to shift my frequency by 25 kilohertz. Um, let's say as well that my maximum signal voltage is 3 volts. Well, what that means is that my maximum frequency modulation, the maximum that I can change my frequency by, will be 3 times 25 kilohertz, which gives me a 75 kilohertz modulation. What does that mean? Um, now, because our signal can go plus or minus uh, 3 volts, that means that I'm going to need my carrier frequency right in the centre, 
and then I will need 75 kilohertz on one side and 75 kilohertz on the other side. I will need both of those frequencies um, in order to be able to get an output um, that's reasonable. So I'll need, those, I'll, I'll need to use up all those bands. Now, I've grossly oversimplified this here. So what you might see in the textbook is sometimes you have multiple side bands. Um, what that means is I can double that. I can have extra sets of frequencies. Um, and what we find out is if you do some of the horrible, horrible, horrible maths, um, the more frequencies you have, the more closely you get back to the original signal. Um, it's to do with things like the rate of change of the frequency. Now, I'm not going to cover that now because it's not needed for your course. Um, but if you do some research, you might see why actually having extra side bands sort of tacked onto the side, that will give you an even better signal. But for A-level, you don't need to worry about that. Okay, so um, if we look at how spectrum is allocated, what, um, just a little bit that you might want to know for reference is that different bands, different uh, governments allocate to different uses. So you can see here some of the main ones. Uh, AM radio has the lowest frequency. Uh, then it goes TV broadcast, then FM. Cellular level is getting into the microwave band along with Wi-Fi. Um, and then we get into some particularly interesting curved radar applications and things that are licensed by governments that, um, so you can't broadcast on them. And this broadcasting and these frequency allocations are quite important. Because um, if we think back to our sidebands and our frequencies, um, if you own a radio station you want to transmit FM, you need to make sure that nobody else is transmitting on your carrier frequency and that they're also not transmitting anywhere in your sidebands. So we have to make sure that the lower sideband of the next radio station along doesn't overlap with the upper sideband of your, your radio station. So you have to keep separation between these frequencies. And if they get too close, they overlap, and they start to degrade each other's signal, and weird things happen, and it sounds rubbish. And this is where frequency allocation comes in. Um, in most countries, the government will allocate certain frequencies to certain users, they'll have a license, and only they will be allowed to broadcast in that range of frequencies. Um, if you want to have very high quality music, then you're going to need quite a wide range of frequencies so you can get big uh, bandwidth, big sidebands. If you're just transmitting voice data, then you can have a much narrower band of frequencies and pay a lot less. Now, just to summarise this, FM. Why do we like it? Well, FM gives us a much higher quality signal. Um, part of that is due to the technical nature of how we encode and decode it, um, but it's also um, due to the fact it's very resistant to interference. So if you look at our FM wave here, um, FM is really, sorry, AM is really susceptible to blasts of static. So if there's lightning, that's a massive blast of radiation. Um, and that radiation will change the amplitude of the whole AM wave, obviously. Um, FM, we don't care about the amplitude of the wave, all we care about is the frequency of time. So because of that, the, our FM wave is much less susceptible um, to these blasts of sudden radiation that you get from uh, lightning, particularly, and turning on things, turning on uh, anything with a spark will create a blast of radio frequency. Um, FM doesn't care what the amplitude is, as long as it can be detected. So because there's very few sorts of interference that actually change the frequency of something, um, FM is much less... Uh, susceptible to interference. Um, there's also some cool stuff that we can do with sidebands, but I'm not going to get into that now because um, I don't want to overload you. AM has the advantage that you only need a tiny bit of frequency to do it. You only need the carrier frequency. So you can stack your radio stations really close together um, and not worry too much about um, what's going on in the background. Okay, um, so it has a lower frequency. So um, also, also because AM is actually broadcast at lower frequency, Diffraction, as you know, the longer your wavelength, the greater your diffraction, so you can diffract AM radiation over hills. Um, so that can become quite useful if you live in rural areas. Um, but as I said, it's much more susceptible to interference. Okay, that's all you need to know about modulation. Uh, next week is going to be on digital to analog conversion. So um, right now, you're probably thinking, well, I don't remember much of this stuff. Um, this is all radio that, okay, might be in cars, but isn't really used anymore. Well, we're going to start looking uh, next lesson at how we've gone to the digital revolution uh, and how we have turned these signals uh, from analog waveforms into computerized digital signals. So I'll see you then.